Becoming a Playboy Playmate was to these girls like Miss America. Even if their family or their boyfriend said, we don't want you to do it, the girls wanted to do it. I had never seen women that looked like that. They looked like someone had created them out of a, as a statue. You would like pass out if you, they were so beautiful. I became a playmate kind of by accident. I knew a model who had done some modeling for Playboy, and I didn't know it, but there was a $1,000 finder's fee for anyone who got someone who ended up in the magazine. So she said, I would think you'd, you know, you'd really be good in the magazine. So I was like, oh, okay, and I'm so glad that I did it. I mean, it was, it just opened up a whole world to me. I'm a girl from a small town in Wisconsin. I got involved in Playboy, I believe it was 1978, and it was so much fun. He brought me to California and just changed my life. Well, I was an athlete, and then three years later I met Hefner, and I came from Hawaii to the Playboy Mansion. He wanted to know if I'd stay and test. I said, sure. I thought, well, this is probably a very nice transition to model for Playboy. The pay was really well, and <laughs> it was a great career. Hanging out at the Playboy Mansion was really fun. You could sit out at the pool and be topless and get a nice tan if you wanted. Mainly it was girls. Some girls would go get a massage, and then they had the game room. I mean, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, tents were being set up for different events, or people would come up for tennis. It was kind of a country club in a way. And I lived right next door to the guard centers. We shared a closet, so I could go into the closet, and I could hear who was coming and going. So I'd go, oh, okay, oh, that'll be fun. I'll go have lunch with him. If I wanted to go and talk to my favorite author, I could sit down and have lunch with him at the mansion and talk to him and have a real conversation. I used to go to the mansion a lot because I was hungry. I was an uh, actress who didn't work very much. I always knew that I could get a great meal. There might be some interesting people to talk to. You would meet producers and directors at the mansion. It was a very good stepping stone back then. Every Friday night was movie night. They'd come up at six and have barbecue and swim in the pool outside. And Half would always say, it's movie time. Movie time. What are we about to begin? And then everybody would finish and they'd go into the living room and get their popcorn. And we always got first run movies that you couldn't see in the theater yet. The parties were unbelievable. And it was elegant. Everybody dressed up cute. It was just like going to your friend's house. You could do anything you wanted. You could go sit in a corner and have a long, deep conversation with somebody you hadn't seen, or you could be dancing all night away. It's a big, fun, safe environment. You know, there was the parties, and then there was after the parties. There are portions of the mansion, you know, that people would venture into, you know, lock the door, and, you know, why not? I mean, it's there. <laughs> Supposedly, after I would go home, there would be people that would go out to the guest house with whoever the young hot guys were that were allowed to go up there and a lot of the girls wanted to be with him. Those guys came up there a lot and probably got as many girls as they wanted because they were super cute. I mean, I wasn't in that particular circle where things were like really wild, but they said that it was wild. You know, you had five acres so you could meander through the, the part of the house through the trees and, you know, and have fun. You were an object, that was the point of it. But anyone who um, misbehaved got banned. I mean, just banned. And there was lots of security. If you were ever in a compromising situation, you could pick up the phone and call them in the guardhouse. Everybody kind of knew, be nice, be gentle. If the girl wants to give you a number, that's fine, but there was no pressure. I believe the closeness between the playmates was because we had so many events together and I think the girls all just kind of kept in touch. And of course, some married, moved away and didn't ever want to say they were a playmate. They, you know, they, they were embarrassed. That was a one-time thing, they never did it. But most of them were happy with their decision and happy with all the friends they made. I don't think at this age, in your 20s, that you're thinking about the future. You're just enjoying the moment and it was fun and it was exciting and it was adventuresome and new. It was just a wonderful sort of sorority to be a part of.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.